educators, welcome back to Design to Educate. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at grading student activity and seeing if they've submitted something. Let's take a look. Now, if you are one of the many educators building a course on a digital platform, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be releasing a lot of content in the instructional design industry, the best tips and tricks, and how to set up a course for success online. Since the semester has begun and our students are actively engaging in our courses, now it's time to take a look at how we're gonna actually grade the activity inside our courses. We have discussion posts, we have assignments, we have something to submit. So let's dive into the gradebook and see how we're going to actually access the content and the student submissions. Jumping into a course that has student activity, I can go to their submissions one of two ways. I can go to the presentation itself or the assignment itself. I can also go to the grade book and on this gradable item list, I can go and find that presentation. This uh, grade book tab will actually show me a few things. When the due date is, what is my status? Uh, if I have any grades to post, it will actually show them up here. I can then go to my student list and see what their current grade is and when they last access. So I can manage a lot of stuff in this gradebook tab. But the main thing that we're looking at is getting to the student submission. I'm going to go to this presentation assignment. I can then see if I was on the gradebook tab, it lands me on the submission page. If I go to the con course content area, it actually will put me inside the course content and I will go to an arrow that says submission. So I'll do that very quickly here. If I go to this presentation, I can see that it lands me in the content area. I can then click on this arrow or the submission and I can go out to the submission. In any rate, I want to get to this page. It does tell me that I had one student submit it. I have one to grade, zero to post. I can use these filter options to see if I want to only see non-submissions or maybe somebody's in a draft. Maybe they're currently working on it, but they haven't submitted it yet. In this case, I have two test students. I have one that attempted it today, and I also have one that has not submitted it. I can see that the one attempt is there ready to grade. That means they actually submitted it. If they're in the middle of attempt, it will say that there's a draft saved. Now, to view this submission, I can simply click on the student's name. It will then open up into the actual submission. I can see that they uploaded a PowerPoint. I did, as the student, just upload a PowerPoint from Blackboard on how to master a gradebook. It's a workshop that we've done in the past for our school. But if your student submitted that PowerPoint, they will see it in this window here. If they submitted a Word document, you will be able to view it in this uh, window. You can grade it right here, making annotations. You can upload a picture. You put text box. You can circle things or draw lines through things. You can print it off, download the file. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to actually grade. But just know if they've submitted a file, we're able to view it right here in this inline uh, file viewer. We can also give them feedback on their actual attempt itself here in this box. If we wanted to send them uh, maybe a calculation or an attachment, we can do that. We can also send them a recording of our feedback. I really like to use this option so when it's a quick, hey, this is a really good thing that you've submitted here, maybe go ahead and make these changes and resubmit. I can actually record a quick video uh, for them to watch uh, to give them that feedback in a video format. If there was a rubric associated with this assignment, it would be up here and I could grade that according to the rubric. But this is a simple upload the PowerPoint. Uh, they meant the slide requir the requirement that I have. So I wanna go ahead and give them a 96. Maybe I wanted to have them submit uh, another file of some kind or record themselves over the PowerPoint. In any case, I gave them a 96 and I can do that by editing the grade right here in this pill form. Now, going back to the submissions on the individual assignment itself, I can see that the student's grade was submitted as a 96, but it hasn't posted yet. Just know that when you are grading something, if the setting is correct, uh, it will not post automatically. You want to be able to set that automatic post in the grade submission itself. Uh, so if you go to the content and settings under this assignment setting, 
we can then say that I want to post it automatically here under the assessment grade. If I had this selected, it would automatically post that grade for the student, but since I did not, I have to manually post the grade itself. Going out to the gr main gradebook tab, we can see that I have uh, graded one, and I can post this grade here. When I click on this box, it'll ask me, do I want to post all the grades? Now, this is the big area or the broad area where I can post all of those grades for that particular presentation. I want to go ahead and do that now, and the student has now received that 96. They will see that reflected in their gradebook. Now I want to show you how you can actually download all the submissions to your device. You can go into the gradebook in the grid view and access those submissions and access those attempts. Let's take a look. Going to the gradebook tab, I want to go to the grid view. I can see that I have my student list here. I have all of the gradable items over here. And if I want to go and find this presentation and download all the submissions, I can simply click on this icon. It will give me download results and it also download submission. If I hit download submission, it will allow me to select what submission I want. If I want to just simply select all of them, I can. In this case, this is the only student that submitted something. I can then hit create zip file and send that zip file. It will send me that zip file, I'll be able to open it up. I will then have the file to their PowerPoint on my actual device itself. I can then make any changes that I want to. Uh, if not, you can still go and grade in that uh, inline reader and be able to make annotations there and give them feedback and move on to the next student. Now, just like other submissions, discussion posts are graded the same manner. You can go to the discussion tab. You can see that there's a new submission with this purple icon in this example discussion. I'm going to go ahead and select that. I can then see that there's student activity going on out here. I can go over to grades and participation. And now I can see that I have the three students. One of them is my preview and I have several to grade. If I go ahead and select this preview, this student in this list, I can see that they answered uh, this question here in the discussion, and they can also re they also replied to a student over here. So I can see all of their activity within this discussion. Uh, they responded and replied, and now I can give them a grade accordingly. So I believe this person deserved a 95. They did a great job. I could edit their grade up here. I can also give them feedback under this icon. I can then move to the next student that participated in that. This is a test student. I can see that they responded, but they never replied. Uh, so I can also see who replied to their post if I want to toggle that view. So they didn't reply. They only just uh, posted. I'm going to give them a 75. I'm feeling uh, you know, nice today. The other thing is I can then give them a final um, feedback and say, hey, you're missing that reply. Also, if you are using a rubric, which I do recommend, you can have that icon here and grade this discussion accordingly. Now that we're diving into those student submissions, be sure to give them the feedback that they deserve. If you have any other questions related to submissions and managing student activity in Blackboard, be sure to like this video and comment with your questions below. I'm going to be uploading more instructional design videos as I go through the semester to help you build the best course for your digital learning platform. Thanks for watching.